Hey everyone! In this video I'm revisiting the edge detection effect from the last tutorial, but this time we're doing it the right way. Previously we used the screen quad for the post-processing. It works, but it's pretty limited, especially when we need to stack multiple effects. Thankfully Godot has now a better solution for post-processing, the compositor. It's a much more versatile approach that let us hook directly into different stages of the rendering pipeline. For this tutorial I'll be using the Godot Engine version 4.4. The compositor is a powerful but complex system. This video won't cover every detail, instead we'll use the example code from the Godot documentation as a starting point and I'll focus on the changes needed to get the edge detection effect working. We'll start by creating a script that setups all the data that the compute shader needs to run. Then, we just need to convert our previous shader into a GLSL file so Godot can run it as part of the rendering process. Alright, let's get started. I've already set up a simple scene, it's just a few objects and a working pixelation effect. If you'd like to learn how to create this setup, check out my previous tutorial where I go through all the steps. We'll start with the script. It needs to extend this compositor effect class and have a class name. Since we want it to run in the editor, we also needed to make it a tool script. Next, we'll create a custom parameter to pass data into our shader. In the init function, we'll initialize it as an array to hold all the information we'll need later on. In this line, we're loading the shader we'll be using later. If you copy the script and shader to a different project, you may need to change the shader path here. Now let's move into the render callback function. This gets called by the rendering thread every frame. And there are a few important things we need to handle here. First, we need to grab the render buffers for the scene, the color layer, which gives us the screen texture, along with the depth layer and the normal roughness layer. Next, we need to create a texture sampler state. This will be required later when working with the depth and normal textures. Then, we add the data we want to pass into the shader to our parameter storage buffer. Specifically, we need to include the scene size and the camera's inverse projection matrix. Now that we have all the information our shader needs, we just need to create uniforms for each one. Each uniform will have a different binding value. We'll create one uniform for the parameter data, one for the screen texture, one for the depth texture, and one for the normal roughness texture. The parameter uniform should be a storage buffer type, the screen texture should be an image type, and the depth and normal textures should be sampler texture types. For the depth and normal uniforms, we also need to include in the IDs the sampler state we created earlier. To finish it up, we just need to create a uniform set, add all of our uniforms to it and bind it to the compute list. Now let's move on to the shader. It needs to be a GLSL file, which means we can't edit it directly in Godot. Instead, you need to create the file manually in the project's file system. You can edit the GLSL file with any code editor that you prefer. In the shader, we need to define the layout for the uniforms we set up earlier. That means creating parameters to receive the data we're passing in from the script. We also need uniforms for the screen texture, depth and normal. Note that the screen texture uses the image 2D data type and the depth and normal textures use sampler 2D. To access data from the image to the texture, we need to use the image load function. Most of the shader is the same as the previous tutorial. There are just two key differences that I want to highlight. First, to properly sample the normal texture, we need to pass it through the normal roughness compatibility function, because it's stored in an optimized format in the buffer and needs to be converted. Second, when sampling textures, it's important to add a small offset to the UV coordinates to avoid weird artifacts. Now that everything is set up, go to the World Environment node in your scene. In the Compositor Properties, create a new array and add an element of the type matching your post-processing effect. The name should match the class name you defined in the script. One last thing, for the normal roughness to work, you need to expand the Compositor element and enable the Needs Normal Roughness option. It would be pretty embarrassing if someone spent hours wondering why the script wasn't working just because they missed this hidden setting, right? Could it be me though? Anyway. As you can see, the edge detection works just like when using a screen quad. 
But here we get the option to choose exactly which stage of the rendering pipeline our shader runs in. Plus, it's much easier to add additional effects this way. I'll leave a link to the example project in the description below. You can also make a donation to support my work. Any contribution is greatly appreciated. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.